I think I'm getting a better idea of what a solid state version of Tesla's special generator is actually composed of. You've basically got a source of DC current, let's say it's a battery, and then you have, I think it's called an inverter, to convert that into AC, and then you have a transformer that's magnetically isolated uh, the primary versus the secondary with a, a magnetic shielding between them and totally surrounding each one. So each coil has its own magnetic shielding. Now that's a little weird because if they both share the same core you can't do that. But when I made my um, provisional patented device for grounding myself to the earth and magnifying that um, information between myself and the earth using an iron cord floor flange, a toroidal core. I found it best to use two of them wired oppositely with same number of windings on each, wired in series, connected in series, um, and then sandwiched together with a neodymium magnet preferably in the center of position in the center of those two sandwiched bagels so to speak or donuts. Um, and then the whole thing buried in sand, surrounded by al aluminum um, foil, let's say, surrounding the sand. And then, of course, the, the plastic chassis. I had a plastic chassis. But according to this, if we put two cores, both of them toroidal, um, see, now that's not exactly a normal AC transformer, now that I think of it. But be that as it may, on either side of the iron membrane surrounded by an iron enclosure. So each one is isolated from, from each other and the magnetic field of both are soaked into the iron chassis and iron membrane and then carried off to a larger iron mass to one side to help um, improve or let's say diminish the ability no, increase the ability of the, of the iron to become saturated with mag magnetism, to help retard the time phase between the two iron cores so that this, the secondary doesn't respond as quickly as it normally would. And that monkeys with the power factor. So by monkeying with the power factor, we can hetero heterodyne, according to uh, Adam Trumbly, we can create a standing wave out of our AC output. Originally it's DC and we don't even need a, a unipolar situation. We just need an inverter um, inverting the DC into AC. But then we have to have a specially made transformer to process that output, that AC output. And we gotta have a special iron membrane and an iron chassis and which could be magnetically coupled to a much larger iron mass um, you know bolted to something big um, because that's going to be the extension of the resonant domain. The resonant domain is the magnetic um, sink, the membrane and the chassis. The iron mass to one side is just something extra to improve that resonant mass. Um, so this little diagram points out that this portion of the overall mass of iron will contain far less magnetic storage than will this portion because this is much more massive and this is magnetically coupled to a solid iron mass and this is the iron chassis surrounding two AC fields mag magnetically isolated from each other on either side of a magnetic membrane whose thickness Thickness provides for their mutual cancellation into a standing heterodyning wave, um, which is then sent over to a resonant domain of solid iron mass, which is also huh, the iron contained here as well. So, oh, the iron chassis surrounding, wait a minute. So this situation creates a saturation of current here versus a deficiency of current here where it's not needed because you're not picking up any current over here. But you're picking up your current over here and you want the current to be saturated and to do that for your electric field to be saturated you have to deplete the magnetic field even if it's just ever so slightly. 
you deplete the magnetic field component of an electromagnetic pairing of fields. And this, I think, is what's going on when we properly, as uh, Bedini would say, those skilled in the art, properly introduce a heter heterodyning standing wave into a resonant, resonant domain. Now, if we just blow up this section, I can find the graphic. Here it is. So the blow up of the chassis. So two AC fields separated on either side of a magnetic membrane created by two sets of DC counter-rotating homopolar disks and their corresponding vortexes of compressed air. That's the mechanical version. And it comes off of Tesla's patent, US 433,702, 5th of August, 1890, called Electrical Transformer or Induction Device. And this shows that it's connected to uh, another larger domain. So let's see. The other thing I wanted to show you is the blow-up of his other patent, the one on the 150,000 alternating generator. <clears throat> what I did was, down below we have the image from the patent that shows the copper disk that's stationary and the two sides of the core electromagnet that are facing it and it has serrations and he shows in his diagram that this side is north and this side is south and the black is an insulator he calls it while the white portion of the copper disk is the conductor now because we know all the copper disk is he says are grooves cut with a table saw in a radial fashion so that tells me that the ridges are the conductors, while the valleys are the res uh, resistors because they're thinner there. Okay, so this disk is kind of flimsy in a sense. It's structurally flimsy. That's why he makes it stationary, because it is so flimsy. He couldn't rotate it without the whole thing falling apart. So he rotates what is structurally sound, and those are the two core, electro-core magnets on either side of this flimsy copper disc. But, so I envisioned that the grooves match each other on either side, on either side of the copper disc. Um, and, you, and so you see there are two grooves on the copper disc per groove on the pole piece of the core of the magnet. So this, um, this ridge here, he calls A prime. That means the, the, the electricity is going to be flowing inwards centripetally from the periphery to the center of the copper disk, while the ridge of the copper disk that is in alignment with the north-south poles of the electromagnet, that is going to be charged with electricity and so that will be thrown outwardly, centri cent centrifugally, along the ridge of that copper disk. So we have alternating flows of current coming out and going in because he's of his arrangement, the geometry of how he cuts his serrations on the magnetic portion, the magnetic um, core versus the copper disk. Now, if we apply this alternator, this is an alternator generator that he patented. If we apply this to a unipolar situation, I mean, we could apply it to a homopolar situation, but what if we, we apply it to a unipolar situation? Then um, we still could have an AC situation because we're taking our brush contacts off of the edge of the copper disk, so we can arrange it such that it alternates. But you get very rapid alternations. And it's an improvement over an alternating uh, generator because now... Um, we don't use an electromagnet to charge up the iron core. We use a permanent magnet with serrations. And it'll work just as well even if we rotate the permanent magnet with the copper disk. It should be no different. So we've simplified the design elements of that alternating generator and provided for rapid alternations of an AC output. But this is mechanical. So this is if we pursued a mechanical approach. But um, we could pursue 
a non-mechanical approach using um, a DC power source, an inverter, a specially designed transformer in an iron chassis with a membrane between the primary and the secondary. And if we separate the cores of that transformer, put them on two separate toroidal cores that are wired together, um, their outputs, the coil windings are wired together. So we've isolated, completely isolated, their two iron cores, which doesn't make any intuitive sense, I suppose. And maybe if we add, you know, my arrangement might be correct if we add a neo-magnet to the central hole shared by those two cores that are sandwiched together. Um, no, wait a minute. No, they're isolated. So we'd have two neo-magnets for each one. And each one is buried in sand or silica, basically. Uh, dielectrical material. So I chose sand. Uh, quartz crystal sand. So each one would be buried. Um, and I guess the interior of this could be lined with aluminum. Aluminum film. Now that I think of it. Because that would reflect back into the interior the uh, electrostatic component into the sand so that the sand soaks up the electrostatic component of the electromagnetic field. But the magnetic component would be absorbed by the iron chassis and the iron membrane and retard the relationship between the two um, transformer coils. So the only thing about them is their wiring that makes them an AC transformer. If, if, yeah, um, and yeah, this is the solid state version. Um, so I'm not sure, I don't want to think about the uh, active, the mechanical version at the moment. Um, well, the inverter is making it oscillate. Um, wait a minute, let me think about this. Yeah, it'd be very difficult to call it an AC transformer if you create two iron cores that are magnetically separated from each other and isolated from each other. That, that, and yet that's what Tesla specified in his patent. So I, 